So uh, we are again on education policy analysis and leadership. That is uh, looking at Unit 5. And the objectives include the following. One, to identify major models of policy making. And then two, explain the intricacies of each module, that is the probably the characteristics of each module. And then third, provide a critique of each module. Okay. So that will be our our interest for for this particular module. Okay. Okay, so um so we have some questions for reflection on on it uh the uh, the first one they're asking why do we have policies second who makes policies third for whom are the policies meant then fifth what are some of the procedures followed when formulating policies any attempt to those questions? One, two, three, four, four, seven. Okay. So, uh, starting with the first one, so why do we have policies? Um, I think there's a number of things that come to mind. In, uh, um, I think first and foremost, it's to kind of um, so to set maybe to set expectations uh, as far as um, when we're implementing a policy, um, it is going to clearly spell out basically a solution to a problem, uh, and it's going to show us, I guess, the how to do that as well, um, and then. When a policy is in place, it's also there to, to hold people accountable to follow the policy um, and make sure that they're kind of uh, in compliance with what, what has been outlined. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, it's like a roadmap, I guess, for what needs to be done. Okay. Then uh, the next one. Okay. Uh, who makes policy? Well, uh, <laughs> depending on, I mean, some policies are made uh, by multiple people, depending on the level. So you have uh, presidential level, or you have the government level. Um, so we're kind of setting the standards uh, for the country. But then you also have policies um, that can be made um, at a local level. So I may implement a policy in my school, um, but that doesn't mean that someone else in another school has to implement the same policy. Um, uh, CEOs of companies may also uh, make policies for the employees. Um, for Companies, boys at the schools also implement policies and make the policies. Okay, great. So, um, then uh, for whom are the policies meant? What are. Um, so, the policies are meant for. Um, I guess all of the parties that are involved, because one, even though it's making a policy, it's also going to, um, it's also for them, because it's going to hold them accountable for the leadership and, and how things are run. And it's also for the subordinates who are either working uh, in the government, if they're working in a corporation, in a the, the general population, the general public for society as well. So this would be some law and order uh, 
Vorbach, die Bezirkshöfe, auch das ist auch noch ein bisschen was zu sagen. Ja, ein toller Bild, so, also unter die Bande für uns. Und dann, the implementation of the policy. Okay. Alright, so. Um, and then lastly, we have uh, what are some of the procedures followed when formulating policies? Um, I don't know. What we just talked about in the in the last unit. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So there's uh, what was it? Six. So you have the you have the planning. You have the um. Go back to that planning. Um, you have uh, I'm just implementation. Okay. So planning the policy. Um, then during implementation, kind of seeing what's happening on the ground. Is it working? Um, also including all relevant stakeholders in the process. Um, and then involving the policymakers in the process, or maybe the stakeholders in the process from the beginning, so that it's like um, it's a baby, not like just say, okay, this is what we decided, now you need to do it. <laughs> Okay, great. Okay, great. Okay, great. So at least, uh, yeah, it's true. Why do we make, why do we have policies? Of course, policies. Are made. We've all, we've always talk, talked about this. Um, you or we or they develop policies because they want to address existing challenges. They want to pick on. They want to respond to opportunities existing. Uh, they formulate policies or policies are formulated because they want to have um, the guiding principles in terms of the day-to-day -day managing of a particular business or situation which is at hand. Like you said, policies uh, can be done at the as they can be done at the national level, which are called public policies, and usually the people responsible there are the politicians and the technocrats, isn't it? And policies are made for, for the people, for the general public, uh, if it is uh, public policies. And then for private policies, policies are made for, first to guide the, the employees in terms of operations. Policies may be made uh, for the purpose of guiding uh, the organization in responding to its clients and its uh, uh, competitors, its uh, 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 is it uh, area of specialization. So that is the more reason why policies are made. Then for whom, I think we have addressed that question uh, in the previous uh, answers we're giving. Um, and what are some of the procedures, of course, planning, designing, um, is it uh, implementation, ensuring ownership, uh, uh, stakeholder involvement? All those are quite key. All right. All right. Uh, we now move on to. We move on to. Move on to. Is it um, identifying major models of policy making? Which is our first objective for for this unit. So the first model is called incremental police model. Incremental police model. So the incremental model. Um, is conservative in nature okay so when they say it is a it is conservative in nature it is 
it is it is meant <clears throat> it is meant to to cement or to endorse um what the organization stands for or what has been generally accepted okay so this model comes up with policies which are not contradicting the existing state of affairs are we on the same page okay yeah so um of course, so the they may perceive some kind of uh, drifting away from the already existing uh, way of doing things. So in the event that they want to remind people, they want to remind the workforce in terms of what the organization or what the school stands for, then a new policy will be introduced which will which will probably endorse um the values the practices which are already uh in place okay what do you what do you make of that what would be your yeah. mm -hmm. um i mean i think uh, so when i hear the word incremental to me, basically, is like in part I imagine. So I think my understanding was that with this, they're they're basically taking policies that are already um, already in place, and instead of coming in and completely changing the policy, they're making small incremental changes to pre-existing policies. So uh, it might, it, it, what can I say? It's, it's a slower process, I think, in modifying policies, but I think it's more likely to be um, accepted because then there's, it's not like, uh, you're asking someone to change the way they do something. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so, but it's getting to where you want to be is going to take a lot longer. Okay. But I think it's a slow and steady Okay. So great. So, um, <clears throat> Like we have said that uh, these are, this model um, according to the module is saying that uh, the past policies are accepted as having some legitimacy and okay. these existing policies are seen to have uh, sunk costs which discourages innovation. Incrementalism is has proved to be a, a, as has proved to be an easier approach than um, other approaches okay it means that it it doesn't uh, take a lot of time it doesn't uh, encourage some kind of um, thinking outside uh, uh, the box in terms of what has or what people are already doing okay it endorses it just reminds them that this is a path we are supposed to take Okay, and uh, of course, such kind of a model uh, in terms of, um, you may find that it may not be so tedious to come up with a new policy because you already have, um, you already have uh, some practices in line with the same policy that you are coming up with. Yeah, okay, now, uh, in terms of uh, its critique, what criticism is labeled against this? They're saying that the model only looks at immediate problems and short-term solutions by taking one step at a time and leaves behind the overall issue for which the root has to be pulled. Okay, uh, what it means is that um, the model doesn't, does not, um, does not encourage innovation or creativity. Okay, it it it's 
some kind of rub stamps what is already there and sometimes what is already being done may not be perfect you, you get the concept so it's a policy which may not be progressive in nature unless unless you are fully satisfied that what is already in place is quite perfect and should be continued otherwise it doesn't bring about much of the change okay all right we proceed to the next one are you there okay so we go to the rational model the thing that uh, this model tries to understand all the alternatives take into account all their consequences so the rational model gives freedom for people to think outside the box okay it uh, gives freedom for innovativeness it gives freedom for uh, independent thinking and uh, analyzing all the available options in terms of what should be decided okay uh, i think this model tries to improve the content of the policy through technical competence okay so that is quite important um we would say the rational model is progressive in nature because its main aim is to bring about it can bring about change it can be able to to add value to what is already being done what do you make of that module yeah i mean i think it's um okay uh so this one um it's very uh it's very detail oriented and i think the like you said they're trying to look at um everything that is possible um i think uh in okay, I'll say in theory it's good. I I like I like the whole thing about okay, let's evaluate everything um using kind of maybe like a scientific method uh to to look at uh, a policy you know, a situation. But um when we were it, it reminds me also of when we were talking earlier about uh I don't remember which one was it. Uh, is it under the first semester of research? It's very time consuming and very expensive. So um, it's not, I feel like it's not always going to be uh, um Because we're looking at, uh, we're looking at the problem. Uh, we're looking at what are the possible alternatives for dealing with this problem. And then again, you're going to be looking at, okay, um, these are the possible alternatives. What are the possible consequences of these alternatives? Um, and then, um, I think also, if, uh, when, you're, when you're sitting down with a group of people, um, whether it's in a government institution, whether it's in a school, whether it's in a company, uh, the people that are making the policies, they're not going to come to the table uh, being objective. Um, they, they have their ideologies that they're bringing to the table or their agendas that they're going to want to push. So uh, it's more of uh, negotiating and trying to. I would imagine push their own agenda or option in the ideology. Okay. So the same the the rational mode, of course, um it's more it's it's more based on um on um scientific approach and like you said uh, uh sometimes so this approach, I, I would I would relate this approach to a more technical approach, which part of the criticism we raised against that was that sometimes what what is going on among the technocrats may not be 
they may not be the real situation on the ground okay so this model this model will have those shortfalls okay because uh, the decisions are purely based on rationality on which sometimes rationality may not be um, the case with when you go on the on, on in practice in terms of what is going on in society okay just as much as uh, you know for for students mostly graduates you find that uh, a student can graduate with uh, distinctions and when they go in the industry they find things are completely different okay so that's what that's how the rational model can be that's a perfect example of what we can use for the rational model you find that uh, on the ground the industry the graduate has to start learning from from from, from scratch but because they have the technical knowledge which they have acquired it becomes easy for them to adapt and respond to to the situation are we there okay then uh, lastly we can uh, go or maybe we can look at the strategic planning model so the strategic planning model, they're saying it's, it's a combination of incremental and rational approach. Okay, so in this approach, you 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 bring the the technocrats, and then um, you make them to look at uh, what is already what is already prevailing and. Uh, it, it it is it is a more flexible approach in my view because um it will it will bring it will, it will bring in uh, this expertise and then indoors or probably try to analyze what is already prevailing and try to see to to recommend changes either to that or indoors what is already in existence so i think this approach may be be considered uh, to be more effective than only having the rational and the the incremental one. I don't know what is your take on that. Yeah, I agree. I think the uh, cherry pick from the field, the, the positive. It seems typically from what we've seen in the past that uh, normally a combination of methodology is more effective than one or the other okay okay so this thing the strategic model will take into consideration the economic and the political analysis um, and uh, it may it may accommodate divergent views from the from the traditional ones or from the conservative ones because of the component of rationality which is uh, uh, included in it. Mm -hmm. All right, so, <laughs> okay, so this is, uh, can we, can we, can we take a break? And we'll